students welcome back now we are going to see the internal thoracic artery part 2 okay so the internal thoracic artery arises from the inferior aspect of the first part of the subclavian artery i have already mentioned in part 1 the subclavian artery in the presence of um, anterior uh, scalenus medius muscle separating this subclavian artery into three parts one is first part second part and third part so this internal thoracic artery is uh, arising from the first part of the subclavian artery here you can see this is the internal thoracic artery which is arising from the first part of the subclavian artery opposite to the thyrocervical trunk that means above this you'll have the thyrocervical trunk is present so exactly opposite to this thyrocervical trunk this um, internal thoracic artery is arising okay this origin lies this origin lies two centimeters above the sternal end of the clavicle two centimeters above the sternal end of the clavicle normally here you, you can have this uh, clavicle here isn't it so on both sides this is the clavicle here isn't it so the origin lies two centimeters above the sternal end of the clavicle above two centimeters from the sternal end of the clavicle okay now coming to the course and relations so above the first costal cartilage so this one is the first costal cartilage above the first costal cartilage it runs downwards it runs downwards forward and medially so this part so this part it runs downwards it runs downwards forwards and medially it runs downwards forwards and medially behind the sternal end of the clavicle behind the sternal end of the clavicle behind the sternal end of the clavicle and also here the jugular vein sternal end of the clavicle and the jugular vein and also the brachiocephalic vein the first costal cartilage and the phrenic nerve and the phrenic nerve so it runs so this internal thoracic artery runs behind the sternal end of the clavicle and the clavicle ki venaka bhagam lo and also the internal jugular vein and the brachiocephalic vein and the first costal cartilage so ippu nen cheppina parts annitikan venaka bhagam lo untadannamata which one this internal thoracic artery that is the which is present above the first costal cartilage so e part matrame internal thoracic artery which is present above the first costal costal cartilage runs downwards forwards and medially and this part of the internal thoracic artery is present behind the sternal end of the clavicle internal jugular vein the brachiocephalic vein and the first costal cartilage first costal cartilage and also the phrenic nerve and also the phrenic nerve and it descends in front of the cervical pleura and it descends in front of the cervical pleura that means the apical part of the lung is present above here up to here so it descends in front of the cervical pleura okay now below the first costal cartilage then below the first costal cartilage 
द आर्ट्री रन वर्टिकली डाउनवर्ड्स बिलो द फर्स्ट कॉर्टिस्टल कॉटलेज द आर्ट्री रन वर्टिकली डाउनवर्ड्स लाइक दिस ओके ऑन द पोस्टीरियर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस कॉस्टल कॉटलेज सो दिस आर्ट्री रन वर्टिकली डाउनवर्ड्स अप टू इट्स टर्मिनेशन अप टू इट्स टर्मिनेशन एट द लेवल ऑफ सिक्स कॉस्टल कॉर्थले इंटर इंटर कॉस्टल स्पेस सो एट द सिक्स इंटर कॉस्टल स्पेस द इंटरनल थरासिक आर्ट्री इज टर्मिनेटेड सो टर्मिनेटेड एंड गिवस टू ब्रांचेस देर दैट वन वी कैन सी एफ्टरवर्ड्स सो This internal thoracic artery terminates at the sixth intercostal space. So, at this level, from below the first costal cartilage up to the sixth intercostal space, what are the structures related anteriorly and posteriorly? So, anteriorly, you people know very well. So, so it is present behind the costal cartilage. So, it is related to the upper six costal cartilages isn't it and above this costal cartilages what is the muscle present the big muscle of pectoralis region pectoral region that is pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major upper six costal cartilages and in the intercostal space what are the muscles present external intercostals and internal intercostal as we know that this external intercostals will end up at the costal level what is the thing present here at this part external intercostal membrane is present so on each space the external intercostal membrane is present and and also we know that so from the sternal end the internal intercostal muscle is getting originating so here internal intercostal muscle and external intercostal membranes are related and also the first six intercostal nerves and it is also related with the first six intercostal nerves so these are the structures are related anteriorly to the internal interco uh, internal thoracic cartilage below the first costal cartilage so anteriorly it is related to the pectoralis major muscle and upper six costal cartilages and external intercostal membrane and internal intercostal muscles and the first six intercostal nerves so these are the structures related anteriorly and coming to the posteriorly the posteriorly it is related to the endothoracic fascia so posteriorly it is related to the endothoracic fascia and pleura pleura so after if you just go back to the wall of the thorax so first it is having skin isn't it superficial fascia deep fascia extrinsic muscles and it is having ribs and in between the ribs you will have the intercostal space and in the intercostal space you will have the intercostal muscles and nerves and vessels after that so inside the rib cage another fascia is present that is called endothoracic fascia after this endothoracic fascia you'll have the pleura and after that pleura you'll have the lung isn't it so up to the pleura so posteriorly it is related to the endothoracic fascia and pleura up to the second or third cartilage up to second or third cartilage costal cartilage below this level below this level the sternocostalis muscle separates the artery from the pleura the sternocostalis muscle separates the artery from the pleura so up to the level of second up to the level of second or third costal cartilage um posteriorly it is related to the 
endothoracic fascia and below this level that means uh, second or third below this level this artery is separating from the pleura by the sternocostalis muscle the sternocostalis muscle sternocostalis is a one of the part of transverse thoracis so which is originating from the inner side of this sternum isn't it sternum costalis muscle okay so this is about the um, relations on the posterior aspect of the internal thoracic artery next the artery terminates at the sixth intercostal space by dividing into superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery and the musculophrenic artery superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery so this artery so this internal thoracic artery is accompanied by two vena cavae committants so as we know that this artery is um surrounded by two veins that is called vena committants so we know that at each artery on both sides so it is having two veins which are interconnected so this is called vena committants this internal thoracic artery is accompanied by two vena vena committants which unite to form the internal thoracic vein so these two veins unite to form internal thoracic vein that is internal thoracic uh, vein is also called as internal mammary vein the vein runs upwards the vein runs upwards along the medial side of the artery the vein runs upwards along the medial side of the artery to end into the brachiocephalic vein to end into the brachiocephalic vein at the inlet of the thorax so a chain of lymph nodes lies along the artery so a chain of lymph nodes are also present along the chain of the artery so a chain of lymph nodes lies along the artery along the artery so these are the intercostal lymph nodes so this is about the course and uh, relations of this internal thoracic artery now coming to the branches coming to the branches so it gives pericardiophrenic artery so pericardiophrenic artery and some mediastinal arteries which are small and irregular branches here it is not mentioned here there is a media stenal arteries and anterior intercostal arteries superior epigastric artery perforating branches perforating branches and also musculophrenic artery so there are six branches which are arising from the internal thoracic artery one is the pericardiophrenic artery anterior intercostal arteries and um, media stenal arteries perforating branches superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery now we will see one by one these are the six branches which are coming from internal thoracic artery the first one is the pericardiophrenic artery arises in the root of the neck arises from the root of the neck and accompanies the phrenic nerve and accompanies with the phrenic nerve there and this pericardiophrenic artery reaches to the diaphragm and this one reaches to the diaphragm and it supplies so this name indicates the pericardiophrenic artery it supplies to the pericardium and the pleura in the thorax pericardium and pleura in the thorax so this pericardiophrenic artery arises at the root of the neck and accompanies with the phrenic nerve to reach the diaphragm it supplies pericardium 
and pleura so this is about the pericardiophrenic artery now coming to the mediastinal so the mediastinum so if you know about the mediastinum then you can understand the mediastinal arteries that mediastinum is a big chapter we can see in the next uh, coming sessions so those are the mediastinal arteries or small irregular branches that supply the thymus thymus the front of the pericardium pericardium is nothing but covering of the um, heart like pleura on the lung so pericardium is also a covering on the uh, heart okay so it also supplies to the front of the pericardium and the fat in the mediastinum and fat in the mediastinum this is about the mediastinal arteries mediastinal arteries are the small irregular branches so that means it is going to supply on the inner aspect so inner aspect okay that is the posterior aspect of this internal thoracic artery okay so and two anterior intercostal arteries are given in each upper six intercostal space here you can see two intercostal arteries you can see the two intercostal arteries in the six that one you people know that is called as anterior intercostal arteries next coming to the perforating branches here you can see the perforating branches accompany the anterior cutaneous nerves this one accompany the anterior cutaneous nerves in female the second third and fourth second and third and fourth spaces are large and supply the breast this perforating branches supplies the breast next coming to the superior epigastric artery the superior epigastric artery runs downwards behind the seventh costal cartilage and enters the rectus sheath so this rectus sheath is related to the abdominal region that we can see in the abdomen so the superior epigastric is mainly related to the abdomen okay so behind the seventh costal cartilage and enters the rectus sheath by passing between the sternal and the costal slips of the diaphragm sternal and costal slips of the diaphragm so simply the superior epigastric artery runs downwards behind the seventh costal cartilage and enters the rectus sheath by passing between by passing through the diaphragm okay this is about the superior epigastric artery this superior epigastric arteries may uh, they will anastomose with the um, some of the gastric arteries which are present in the abdomen okay so coming to the musculophrenic artery which runs downwards which runs downwards and laterally which runs downwards and laterally behind the 7th 8th and 9th costal cartilages it gives two anterior intercostal arteries in each intercostal spaces of 7th 8th and 9th it perforates the diaphragm near the 9th costal cartilage and terminates by anastomosis with other arteries anastomosis with other arteries under the surface of diaphragm under the surface of diaphragm so this epigastric artery and the musculophrenic artery which pierces the diaphragm and this will anastomosis with the arteries which are present below the diaphragm okay this is about the internal thoracic artery and and also you people have to note that through these various branches of this internal thoracic artery supplies the anterior thoracic and abdominal walls so on the anterior thoracic anterior thoracic and the abdominal walls 
from the clavicle to the umbilicus from the clavicle to the umbilicus region okay so the internal thoracic artery supplies the anterior thoracic and uh, abdominal walls from the clavicle to the umbilicus region so this is about the internal thoracic artery its origin and its relations branches okay this is about the internal thoracic artery part 2 thank you